We are finally able to dig into the minis from the Fandover and Below set from WizKids, and thanks to them for sending them our way to review. Today, I'm gonna do a blind unboxing of a brick of minis, and very soon we're gonna have our full set review with all the lore. I reviewed the adventure in a video that you can watch up there in the corner. Fandover and Below takes one of the best reviewed D&D adventures, one of my personal favorites, which went up to level five and gives it a bit of a polish and then adds on a second half dealing with the Far Realm and Mind Flayers. It's what I would call a classic dungeon crawling adventure. It didn't really bring anything terribly innovative to the table, but if you're looking for a good first or second adventure to run with your group, it definitely fits the build there. I'm expecting the mini set to cover a lot of classic creatures and mind flayers and far realm tainted monsters, so I think it's gonna be an exciting set for everybody. We haven't done a giveaway in quite a while, so let's do one for the holidays. We'll give away a free booster box of this set. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber to our channel here, The Gallant Goblin, and leave me a comment down below letting me know which mini you saw today is your favorite and why. We will leave the contest open until New Year's. The giveaway is open to U.S. residents only this time, and after New Year's, come back and check our videos and your YouTube replies to see if you won. But let's go ahead and dig in and find out as we check out our 29 Ninth Icons of the Realms booster set, Fendover and Below the Shattered Obelisk. You ever just want to pull out your phone and be playing RPGs like Pathfinder with your friends? Tabletop Town brings that asynchronous play to your fingertips in a beautiful streamlined package with all the bells and whistles. Play great indie RPGs like Honey Heist, Moonlight on Rose Hill Beach, or big games like Pathfinder 2nd Edition with the newly released remastered rules. Character sheets, dice, the official rules, images, and chat are baked right in. You can even specify with a tap if you are chatting in in or out of character. The app is free to use with optional purchases of official rule systems. Stop worrying about scheduling your next session and just play by post anytime you want. Download a Tabletop Town from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store today. We'll have the links in the corner or down below. All right, let's do our classic unwrapping ritual here. All right, ooh, my glasses popped on too. Let's go ahead and move flick a little bit out of the way so we have a little room to work here. I'm gonna take the hammer and we might need to put this to use at some point. Put it over here and our first box. So these are the smaller size booster boxes so they're not gonna have any huge creatures inside. We're gonna top out at larges. No super boosters in this set either. I'm gonna actually put that down there. Yeah, we are definitely starting off with a far realm looking creature. This is a cloaker mutate. Look at that. Oh gosh, it's got half a skeleton. It looks like a Mortal Kombat brutality or fatality at the end in some way. Uh, super creepy, a cloaker that's been tainted by the Far Realm, which is, we're gonna see a lot of that in this particular mini set. Next up we have, that looks a little bit like a Sturge. It's been a little while since we had a Sturge mini. That's a pretty good one. Can't go wrong there. Little fleshy looking giant mosquitoes. And that looks like a tainted villager. It is a corrupted villager, indeed. So the poor citizens of Phandalin, because of their, of course, influence by the kind of obelisk to the Far Realm are gonna get slowly mutated throughout the course of this adventure. And so you need a couple of minis to represent them. And that's what that one is. And, oh, that's a cool one too, an undead. That is an elf zombie. Oh, very cool. Uh, it does look a very similar to a previous elf zombie, I think it was a zombie that we got in our undead army set. So what we'll do is we'll compare these. It's definitely a different color scheme, but I think it might be the same uh, sculpt. So I'll check that out and let you know. Oh, we do have a little packet here to keep them from getting too wet, I suppose. All right, that's our first set. I move my little way out a little bit. Okay, now that that's out of the box, that's a blue slot. Ooh, that's a super good looking slot too. That might be the best slot mini we've ever gotten. Oh man, it's so cool. I love the the uh, the claws coming out of the elbows and the hand looks like Wolverine, the pose, the color scheme. Ah, oh, that's a really good slot mini. Really like that. Let's see what we have as far as our mediums and smalls. We have, that looks like 
Yeah, that's another uh, zombie. That is also, I think, from the Undead Army set. What is going on with these? We're going to have to do some investigation to this because that is very familiar. Uh, and here we have, uh, yeah, another Duragar zombie that I think looks familiar. Hmm, okay. So we're going to take a look at these here at the end of this video and see what is up. And finally, we have a goblin. That is a yeah, straight-up goblin. It's a good-looking goblin mini. I do prefer the goblin designs in Pathfinder, to be honest with you, but, you know, the D&D classic goblin is hard to do wrong with. I think that's a unique sculpt. I don't recognize it. We did have a goblin warband way back in the day. But now you have one, you can add to it. Okay, moving on. Alrighty, this looks familiar. We got one of these in our preview box, the Odiog Mutate. Uh, a different color scheme on this one. A kind of pukey uh, green color, which fits the creature very nicely. Translucent mini. Nicely painted. It is one of the better looking minis in this set, probably. Um, I do love a good Odiog. Whenever you have a pile of trash somewhere, there's nothing like having one of these sitting at the bottom of it to surprise your players when they kind of like, ooh, maybe there's some loot inside. That was like a gibbering mouther, but a small one. Oh, it's just a gibbering mouther. I, for some reason, thought these were large-sized creatures, but I guess it's a medium-sized creature. Uh, yeah, a very cool, smaller, far-realm gibbering mouther. Looks good. Next up, we have another small one. This is... Looks like another zombie. It is a straight-up zombie, number three. Yeah, with the guts hanging out. Looks also familiar. Something with these zombie minis. Hmm. I have to do some investigation for a full set review. And finally, we have... Ooh, what is this? This is an Intellect Snare. Oh, gosh. I vaguely remember these from the book, but I don't recall their exact story and stats, so we're going to have to do uh, you know, a little research before we do our full set review. But it has a nice... Ooh, it's kind of like a... Not iridescent, but a little bit of shininess to it. And I can't tell if it's a little bit translucent. Maybe not. I think it's just a little bit reflective and shiny, but that's a cool looking thing. You could use that for all sorts of different things. Okay, let's move these off to the side over here. And, ooh, this one's the heaviest one yet. Ooh, and I can see why that's a shambling mound if I've ever seen one. That is a super good shambling mound. If you are playing the Curse of Strahd, there is a shambling mound villain in the very first murder house portion of that adventure. And this is the perfect mini to use for that. Very brightly colored too, but it is super scary looking. All right, so yeah, be sure you get a hold of this one if you're playing Curse of Strahd. And of course, Shambly Mount show up pretty often in different adventures as well. It's a classic creature as well. Uh, that's another Sturge, very cool. And hey, if you're doing a little jungly adventure, nothing like a Shambly Mount and a Sturge. Is a troglodyte. Talk about one of the classic creatures that is underrepresented in adventures and in minis. When have we seen a troglodyte mentioned in anything recently? Maybe I'm forgetting something, but it's a very cool looking creature. I don't even I feel like troglodytes are so underrepresented that I don't even really know their lore in D&D, even though they've been around forever. Uh, finally, we have a drow. That's a good looking drow. It is just called Drow number 15. So yeah, if we're looking for a PC figure or just a person to add to your Drow Warband. That's a really good one. Yeah. That's not going to be somebody's player character very quickly, I bet. All right, we'll move these guys over here. And we're halfway through. Let's see what else we got next. Oh, that's the Encephalopod or whatever it's called. It is the Encephalon Cluster. So this is one of the ones that we got to preview here at the Gallant Goblin when WizKids was first... Uh, announcing these minis. And in our picture, this looked almost unpainted. It looked like a render that was unpainted. And I contacted them and they're like, oh no, it looks better in real life than it does in the render. And it really does. Yeah, this does not look unpainted at all. That's very cool. Pods that are bursting and dripping down. You can see the ooze coming out of the bottom. Um, yeah, these are very cool when the Far Realm influences and corrupts some Mind Flayer eggs. It results in some of this stuff. Cephalon clusters. So you can have some fun with that in this adventure. It's a heavy mini, too. Uh, we got another zombie here. Lots of zombies in this set. Just a classic zombie. Alright. And. 
that looks like a Grimlock. Uh -huh. A little bit bent, not too bad. Pretty nicely painted for a medium-sized creature. The paint jobs have definitely been improving over the last year or two, I think. <laughs> Look at that, those jowls. All right, and that was like another goblin. This is a pretty goblin-heavy adventure, as you can tell from the cover of the book. And is that the same goblin? I think it, no, it's not. This one, oh, this one is a little bit tainted too. This is one of those, yeah, goblin side brawlers. So some of the goblins, of course, have also been influenced by the Far Realm and have gained some psionic abilities, including this little fellow with the glowing green fists. Cool, that could also be used as a nice little PC mini as well, I think. Not enough players play goblin characters. You can tell I'm a little bit biased, but I think we can all agree that more people should be goblins. We got a spider. This is giant spider. Classic dandy creature. Purple spider, purple and pink. Let's see, if you're playing the Pathfinder Adventure beginner box, that will come in pretty handy. That looks like a Grick, a crystal Grick. Uh, it looks a little bit like it goes with the Udiog over here with the translucent color and the green. I'm not sure if that's a Far Realm influenced creature, but I bet it is. Crystal Grick though, so perhaps it has, it does look a little bit crystallized. So maybe it's a different, yeah, it's very shiny actually. Maybe it has a different origin than just being influenced by the Far Realm, but we'll find out for our full lore adventure. I think we got another a goblin. Yeah, it's the same goblin as we had before, number six. Yeah, it's the same goblin as before. And a very, very tiny one here. If I can get it out. Oh no, that's a Demi Lich. No, it's a Flame Skull. Ah, similar. Yeah, well, that's a good looking Flame Skull. <laughs> you know, these are gonna be tiny, but this is about as good looking as a flame skull as I can imagine you doing. It's pretty nicely painted. You have to get right up onto it to see what it is. It looks like a, I thought it was a will o wisp at first, but flame skull it is. Which does uh, make an appearance very early in the Mines of Fandelver adventure. Mine of Fandelver adventure. All right, next to last set, that looks like a regular old brick, or well, a larger one. It is a Grick Alpha. Yeah, that's a, a big old Grick mommy or daddy. So Grick's are pretty good under dark, cavernous enemies to fight for your adventuring party. Also appear in, do they appear in Murder House? I feel like there is a Grick in the basement of the Murder House. Uh, a wolf, very good. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of classic creatures, a lot of under dark creatures, you know, folks that people play, uh, creatures that people fight early on in classic dungeon crawling D&D adventures. Finally a Mind Flayer, I was waiting for this. This one is Hashutu, and there are definitely some named Mind Flayer villains in this adventure. Three, in fact, plus three main ones and a few others. So here we go with this one, with the chains coming off of it. That's a cool looking Mind Flayer. It's a very different looking Mind Flayer with the chains and the pose. And next up we have, well, I've heard to tell what this is off of the bag. No, oh, no, that is, is that Troglodyte again? Yeah, that's another Troglodyte. I think it is the same as the other one that we had, which, yeah, it's the same troglodyte. Okay, we got one box left. Let's see what we got in our final box here. Now, let's go ahead and leave one of these up here so we can remember what we were looking at. And our large in this box. Oh, we have an Etten Ceramorph. Very cool. Yeah, we need more Ceramorph creatures. We got a couple in some of our last sets, like a little gnomish one, I think it was. But this is an Etten that's been turned by a Mind Flare. So it was an Etten Mind Flare to some extent. Uh, I really like that. It's also nicely painted. It's got a, oh, the second head is embedded in its chest. That's a little bit gross, but it's kind of cool. All right, that's a unique one. That's about as unique as you can get. This is like another psionic influenced goblin. It is indeed a uh, psionic goblin, a common creature. You're gonna need a bunch of these for this adventure. Trust me on that. Yeah, nothing like a little bit of a, an alternative take on goblins to keep you going in your adventures. That's another cool looking. Oh, that, yeah, this is not just your regular drow. This is one of the early villains that your player is going to face in the Fendover adventure. This is Neznar the Spider. 
who yeah, Grady might remember fighting in one of his very early adventures in D&D that I ran him through when we did the beginner box, or the starter set, I think it's called. So that's a good one to have a mini of. And our last mini of the day. We have, oh, that's cool. Uh, a psionic ashen right. Ashen white, obviously. Yeah, I remember this is a creature that shows up in one of the uh, early dungeon crawls that happen after the main level one to five adventure in this particular set. When you start going off in the mind player portion of the adventure, you're gonna run into this little dwarven looking ashen white. So good to have a mini of it. Very cool. All right, so the Fandelver Envelope set is gonna be releasing now through January at various retailers. I think it's available now at the official Whiskey store, and I think it's coming soon to other game stores. So be on the lookout for it. A booster box like this is going for about $17, and a brick like we opened here of the eight boosters is going for about 120 bucks. And a case, which is four bricks, and that should contain at least one of every mini in the set is going for about $475 right now. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And be sure you're subscribed to see our full set review in the next week or so as I work on that. And don't forget to enter the giveaway by being a subscriber here on the channel and leaving me a comment down below telling me which of these is your favorite Fendover Mini and why. If you want to make our holiday even more special, you can pick up something using our links at the Hit Point Press Holiday Store. You can't go wrong with an animated spell or condition deck, a Griffin Saddlebag Book of Magical Items or their card set, or Humblewood or Hecna, depending on what vibe you're going for in your adventures. And you can also pick up a Kobold or Seven at our shop, use at heroplus.com, and you can use the code GOBOGOBLIN to get 20% off through the end of the year. You can also get t-shirts and coins and pens and uh, accessory packs. This is Flick wearing his little barbarian accessory pack. And also, I hope you'll join us as we play live on Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and over on Twitch. We're playing the social deduction game Blood on the Clock Tower. It's still the highlight of my week. We played it last night, and if you watch it, I think you will see why. And you can come find us on social media at one of the sites over here. I've got a few more videos I want to show you this month, but then I promise I'm going to take a little break. I keep saying I'm going to, but I'm going to try. If I don't see you before Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful time. If the holidays are tough for you, as they are for a lot of folks, please do reach out to those friends who love you and let them know that you need a little extra TLC this week. They're going to be glad that you trusted them enough to reach out for help. Until I see you again, please stay safe, have fun, love each other, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.